But let's go back to this uh, this fiscal cliff. Why can't uh, you, since since taxes, Will Cain, are going up no matter what, right? If you do nothing, taxes are going to go up. We yes. fall off the cliff, taxes go up. You heard a proposal right there, which is work on the middle class, avoid the fiscal cliff, and then renegotiate the taxes thing past 2013. Why is that not a viable proposal? Wouldn't that bring an end to the fiscal cliff? We could wrap it up now and everybody could go on vacation? You, yes, but you're asking the wrong guy. I'm not in Congress. Um, I, I seem to have a, a camera. Put you on the set, Will. Come on, suck it up. Well, I'm going to answer. I'm always happy to talk if you want to put the camera on me. Um, no, it, look, I, I have a recognition of reality. I can see reality in front of me, and I understand that Republicans have very little leverage. They have very little leverage to decide or to impose our, their will on, the, on this outcome. That being said, what they're looking at is how can we kind of salvage a political victory out of this and stand for what we want? That's and as it. you've had people on this program suggest, it may just be going over the fiscal cliff and not voting for a tax raise would reflect that victory. And then later negotiating taxes down. The problem for Republicans, though, is that polls show that they will be blamed if we go over the cliff. So, like, Republicans do have an incentive to hurry and get a deal done. Then right. let's turn to uh, Texas Republican Congressman Jeb Henserling. He's the newly named chairman of the House Financial Services Committee, also co-chaired the Super Committee on Deficit Reduction. Nice to have you with us, sir. You know, we heard Will uh, a moment ago saying, uh, you know, how do you salvage a political victory? Because the reality is, if nothing is done, if you cannot get together, you, you go over the fiscal cliff and taxes go up for everybody, correct? Well, the president's going to get his revenue one way or the other. House Republicans will do everything we can to minimize the damage to our economy. We know that by raising the rates in the top two brackets, as the president wants to do, Ernst & Young says will cost uh, middle-income workers at least 2% off their paychecks, uh, lose another 700,000 jobs. That's not something Republicans uh, are going to be a part of. But the president obviously is going to get some revenue. There's nothing we can do to stop that. It's written into current law. But the bottom line is you can't solve this problem through revenue. And the president's not being serious. He's moving the goalposts. He started out saying he wanted a quote-unquote balanced approach. So the president's going to get some kind of revenues. I'm, I'm not voting for it, but he's going to get it anyway. Okay, the question so, is, where are his spending reductions? He hasn't put that avoid, on the table. But you could avoid going off. If, if we know, no matter what, taxes are going to go up at this point, if you go off the cliff, for everybody. So what you could do, as I think it was Olympia Snow was recommending, you could do some kind of a deal that doesn't make taxes go up for the middle class, right? And then you would avoid the, the fiscal that, cliff, the, 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 right? Uh, again, the, well, first, the fiscal cliff to our nation's spending-driven debt crisis uh, is a pothole. You got 0.03% of all Americans have million-dollar incomes. This is, this is a shell game. You can't tax your way out of this problem. I mean, you have revenues are about the same level as they were five or six years ago when deficits were running about $100, $150 billion. Now we know that deficits are running one to one and a half trillion dollars. Mm, What's I, changed? I on that. What's changed is on the spending side, and yet all this discussion is on the tax well, revenues. You, you can't well, get there. You can tax every millionaire sure. 100 percent and not, run the government for two or three months. I'm this not is a sure spending-driven crisis, and it has to be solved on the spending side until the president gets serious about. It. I'm not sure what there is to talk about. I'm not that. sure that the only conversations have just been on the tax side. I actually think that there have been conversations on both. But but at this moment, right, the, again, we're going over or toward the fiscal cliff. If you do nothing, all of our taxes are going up. So why not, as a, a first move, say, listen, nobody at this point wants to raise taxes on the middle class and people who uh, are, are low, uh, lower income. So let's do some kind of a deal now, and that'll keep us from going over the fiscal cliff. And then you well, can right let the now, tax we'll... cuts expire for the wealthy. January 1st, it happens. And you can do some kind of a negotiation. And, and that, <laughs> see, I mean, that keeps but us so from going over the that, fiscal that, cliff. Again, but it's going to happen very, anyway, right? This is the very kind of shell game that they run in Washington. If you'll just give me my tax increases today, I will surely give you your spending restraint uh, tomorrow. You know, it's but you have like no wimpy in the on debate. the old pie pie uh, uh, cartoon. We never see these spending reductions materialize. That's the problem. And right now, we're borrowing roughly 40 cents okay, so on then, the dollar, much of it from the Chinese, sending the bill to our children and grandchildren. That's just, just unwise and unsustainable, so, but, frankly. I think it's immoral. And what you're saying is, is that Republicans ought to agree and somehow vote for a big proposed tax increase in hopes that in decades no. to come, that this president's going to do something about spending. No, I, I didn't say that. I, what I said was, why not? Why don't Republicans and Democrats vote for a, a tax 
uh, to, 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 to keep the taxes lower for middle class and, and people with lower income and let the other ones expire. And you could do that now. Speaker, and we wouldn't go over the fiscal cliff. And, and I, I hear you on the spending thing. Yeah. Go ahead. What the speaker has done is exactly what the president claimed he wanted. The speaker has put on the table a balanced approach. The president previously said, oh, I want to raise the top cuts. two rates for $800 billion worth of revenue, and I want a balanced approach with roughly $3 of spending reduction for every $1 tax revenue. Now he's got $5 of tax increase for every $1 of supposed spending reduction, and he's doubled the size, but you can't be surprised he's doubled the that size that was not, of the that tax that was, revenue. But you can't be surprised that the president said no go to that with only well, you know, a couple of hours, right? Because it did not be increase taxes on the, the wealthiest Americans, which he's consistently well, so said. Dad, listen, the president won 51-49. He's got an electoral college victory. That's good enough to get him to be reelected, but it's not good enough to give him a mandate. And the American people consciously, subconsciously, consciously voted for divided government. And the mandate of House Republicans uh, is, is equal uh, to that of the President of the United States, and we're not going to go out and put 700,000 Americans on the unemployment lines. We're not going to take away wages from hardworking Americans, which is exactly what the President wants to do. The President ought to remain good to his previous commitment, and that was he wanted a balanced approach. Republicans are willing to negotiate in good faith, and I think it's pretty obvious, you know, particularly when the Speaker puts on a plan put forth by Erskine Bowles, a Democrat in the first place. Who, as you know, who was appointed one who was appointed one who was appointed well you you know get mr bowles on he was he was in front of the super committee i saw him eye to eye when he put this proposal on the table but he so put out a statement yesterday as it, you know and he said the circumstances have changed uh, what i so know is he was right in front of me as co-chairman of the super <laughs> committee and he had put it on the table so if he wants to take it off the table so be it but the fact of the matter is go and review the transcript go and review the tape this was an erskine bowles proposal now he want, may want to put it up for adoption i don't know i suppose well, that's his he, business he, okay, but it was but something let me just clarify for a moment. He's not claiming he Democrat. never presented it to you. What he's claiming is that circumstances now have changed, is, is what he says in his statement that he, he has now yeah, released. And the circumstances that have changed is that under President Obama, we now have our $4 trillion deficit, and it is spending driven. And until the president puts any kind of spending reductions on the table, all this talk of tax increases, you can give the president every job harming tax increase he's asking for, and it's about three, maybe four percent of his. 10-year spending bill. Ultimately, middle-income Americans are going to get socked with a tax increase beyond recognition unless we do something on the spending side. There's just so long you can play this shell game of trying to hide the true cost of government for middle-income Americans. They're going to get socked with it. Again, it's 0.3 percent of Americans have million-dollar incomes. The problem with the president's plan is sooner or later you run out of millionaires. The math doesn't work. Congressman the Jim only Hensley. way we can get there is with spending reductions to save our economy and to save the next generation from bankruptcy. It's nice to have you talking with us this morning, sir. We certainly appreciate it. Thank you. It. I could have given you a 15-second interview. I'm not going to raise taxes. That's basically, he does not want to raise taxes. And when he talks about spending... Taxes are going up. Right, but he talks about spending... January 40, 40% of the $787 billion stimulus bill that he calls spending... 40% was tax cuts. Look, Does he disagree with those tax cuts? Well, the political reality he's not willing to acknowledge is that the reason Republicans won't just cut a deal on middle class tax cuts is because that's the only small amount of leverage they have now to hopefully keep tax rates down on the wealthiest Americans as well. They know if they cut taxes now, uh, on middle class and just strike that deal, they're never going to be able the to get lower tax cuts. Or to get the, the, the spending right. cuts they right. want. Okay, I just right. had this no, one last true. thing. Entitlement he reform he well. brought up um, the Bowles proposal. Um, not only is he fighting with the left during the daytime, now he's also fighting with the right during the night because he's getting attacked, Jeb and the, and, and the uh, Republican leadership, including Boehner, from the right. And yesterday they removed three conservative slash Tea Party congressmen from their committees. So there's a, there's a fight coming from well, all the angles. The civil war right. happening at the GOP. He said the president won 5149. Sorry, Congressman. Yeah. It's closer to 5347. Just a little fact check. Zoraida has uh, a look at some of the other stories.